What is up guys, Carter Wajenko here with another episode of the Taft Wrap. Today I'm going to be talking about everything you need to start fishing a drop shot. Let's get started. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be talking about all the gear you need from your rods, your reels, line, hooks, weights, baits, everything. Uh, going to cover it all what you need to start catching fish on a drop shot. So gonna keep it short and sweet today, very basic. And first, let's jot, let's uh, dive right into the setup. So first, rod selection is very important. Um, there's mainly two rods that I like to use and it kind of depends on the situation. So the first one and my favorite is gonna be the Dobbins Champion Extreme 742SF. So this, if you guys have watched any of my other videos, I'm a super huge fan of this rod. Uh, it's a little bit on the pricier end of rods, but uh, you can get a very comparable rod in the Dobbins lineup in the Champion XP line, uh, which is about a hundred bucks less, uh, and also a very great, great rod. Um, anything like a 732, uh, 702, 703, all great rods, very similar to this rod. But this is my main drop shot setup for anything from drift into the St. Lawrence for smallmouth or fishing pickwick for largemouth. Um, it covers it all pretty much. It'll take it'll take those light wire gamakatsu split shot hooks that I use and it'll take those heavier weedless uh, drop shot hooks that I use when I'm fishing around grass and it, it handles it all. And the reason I like this rod, I prefer a longer spinning rod um, when you're fishing situations where you're on pressured fish and you need to make long casts. Uh, that's important. Generally, I'm not taking a drop shot and pitching it to targets. Um, you know, I'm casting it around. And uh, longer spinning rod, I'm almost six foot tall. It gives me a little bit more power, I feel like, on the hook set. Um, and it helps me kind of play those fish. And, you know, I, feel, I really feel like I have more control. And I have had no experiences as far as fish loss uh, with this rod. Just the way that I fish and you know the the way I set up my gear, the, I, I hardly lose any fish using this rod on a drop shot. Uh, you know, it may not be for everybody, but this is definitely the setup that I like to go with. And then the reel, very important uh, as far as the reel. So I played around with uh, a couple sizes. I've settled on 2,500. Lots of guys uh, like that 2,500 to 3,000 size reel. Uh, I used the 2000 for a long time and like those, but I really feel like the 2500 gives you a little bit more casting distance. Um, and then that large spool, obviously you can fit more line on it. And I just like the feel of it a little bit better overall. And it kind of balances out the rod being a bigger reel. Uh, and I like a Stratic CI4. Um, you know, they're not, I don't, I'm not sure if Shimano is making these anymore. They have that new Vanford that uh, has become really popular definitely gonna try to get my hands on that for the 2022 season uh, but what's really key about having quality spinning reels is drag so when you have fish that are power diving at the boat especially big smallmouth uh, and you're fighting big fish on a spinning rod you know when your drag is is really not smooth and it's like it'll stop and go and stop and go and when you're using light line especially that will lead a lot of times to breaking your line. So having smooth drag and being able to play with it during the fight is very key. And then high quality spinning reel, uh, you know, it's smooth, has a lot better casting, and you know, it's just a lot more comfortable to fish with. Um, but yeah, that's my setup as far as the rod and reel go. Another rod that I'll go to is a 703. So 703, it's going to be really, a, it's a seven foot rod and it's really gonna be mainly for when I'm fishing targets. So when I'm pitching a drop shot at the Potomac, I was pitching to the bank, you know, as a co-angler. A, a lot of times you get um, real close to the bank, they take the boat real close to the bank. And being able to have a shorter rod so that you can pitch to like pilings, uh, rock, anything like that, you know, grass, Having a shorter rod will make that a lot easier. And, you know, again, when you're you're making shorter casts, uh, that power is not as important. 
and you can get away with that shorter rod but 703 great rod um and yeah and i i do i don't use the light wire gamkatsu split shot hook on this uh when i'm pitching targets most of the time it's around dirty water and i'm gonna be fishing uh a rebarb hook so the 703 it's a little bit heavier rod so make sure uh, you're using a little bit heavier wire hook for that but for line um as you guys saw on the spinning reel um I like to run light lines, so either 10, I, I ran 10 most of the time this year because I was fishing pretty clear water, um, and what the 10 pound line also gives you is a little bit more casting distance, it's a thinner diameter line, it's going to be less drag when you're casting it, so it's going to allow you to get more casting distance, um, you know, I like to use a high-vis braid, it's awesome when you're throwing like a weightless bait or very, uh, you know, a bait that's got a real slow rate of fall it helps you kind of detect those bites and a lot of times with that finesse fishing they'll uh, eat baits on the fall so having a high vis line is awesome uh, allows you to detect detect bites and always running a braid to fluorocarbon leader is crucial when you are uh, using a high vis line like that um, i like 10 pound power pro uh, they have a yellow line and then super 8 slick is nice you know an eight strand braid Four strand is fine too, but eight strand is a little bit nicer because you get a little bit more casting distance. It's smoother uh, and it doesn't cut. It doesn't really cut as much because four strand is rougher. Eight strand is thin, is you know smoother, and it won't cut, um, you know, through through the reel or anything like that if you set the hook really hard. And then going down to the juice, the stuff that the fish see, so. Uh, as far as my leader, I like to run very high quality leader is very important. Gamma touch. Uh, it was actually designed for, you know, using as leader line. So I like to use generally anywhere from seven to 10 pound line. Seven is going to be when I'm really fin Hey, I'm filming. And this, the seven pound line is going to be when I'm fishing really clear water and I really feel like that seven pounds is gonna give me more bites, but most of the time I'll run eight on a drop shot, and then I'll get, if I can get away with 10, I'll do that uh, in dirtier water when I'm fishing around targets and things that will abraze your line. So running that 10 is a little bit nicer, but running the, in my opinion, running the lightest line you can is important because it gives you more sensitivity, and I feel like it gives the bait a lot more action. You know, guys out west, they'll go down to six, and four pound line uh, just because it gives the bait more action and those fish are highly pressured on those on those lakes that they fish there out west uh, so that's really key and then going down to the hook so really two main hooks that i use so first one is a gamakatsu split shot drop shot hook that is for smallmouth fishing when you're nose hooking a bait that's really the only time that i'm gonna use it or any if you're drop shotting any small bait, I would say like three inches or less, uh, and you you can't use a big hook like this one, I'll go with that split shot drop shot. And what everyone is pretty much drop shotting is a flatworm, uh, let's be honest here. And I like to run a size four on that. A lot of guys run size two, but I, I run size four, have no problems. I feel like it conceals the hook better, um, and it doesn't show the fish as much, and you know, get them kind of scared of the bait uh but you know things like that is what i'll do you know run lighter line run a smaller hook just to get a couple extra bites because i fish a lot as a co-angler and that's very important um and i really haven't had any problems with like rolling the hook out or bending the hook out uh you just need to have your drag set right with that kind of light wire hook um but the next thing a rebarb hook awesome awesome hook so I'll get a little close up there if it'll focus. As you guys can see, rebarb hook, essentially what it is, made by Roboworm, uh, but it's a light wire gamakatsu. And then what Roboworm did is they shrunk, uh, put shrink wrap up here and made a little keeper. So what it, what that's gonna do, it's gonna hold your bait and it's for drop shotting, obviously Roboworms. So that's mostly what I, what I throw on this. Um, and it's great for when you're fishing around cover, when you're fishing grass, and 
I feel like the hook the hookup ratio is awesome. I love I personally love straight shank hooks. Uh, not just drop shotting, but flipping, uh, and pretty much anywhere that I can, I like a straight shank hook because I feel like it drives the hook into the fish, the roof of that fish's mouth very easily. And you know, when I have this thing, when I have this thing rigged up on on the drop shot, all it needs to do is come through that soft plastic, and it goes right into the fish's mouth. Um. But yeah, with those bigger profile baits, I'll definitely go with this Robo Worm Rebarb hook. Uh, and generally, I'm going to do that in dirtier water. Uh, you know, it's a pretty big hook, so try to keep it, try to stick with that smaller hook when you're in cleaner water. But pretty much two baits that I really throw uh, when I'm smallmouth fishing. Flatworm, Max Scent. Uh, when you're fishing a drop shot like that, fishing it very slow, Max Scent is key because... It's going to disperse that scent throughout the water and definitely 100% gets a lot more bites. And then the other bait that I throw is a robo worm. So here's kind of the aftermath of this season. Uh, as you can see, not a lot of full bait packages because I throw this thing a ton. Uh, the four and a half inch, the six inch. Uh, I like, I, I really like the six inch and I'll go with morning, either morning dawn, margarita mutilator, or some kind of green pumpkin color if I'm in really clean water fishing for, and I'm generally gonna throw these when I'm fishing for largemouth almost all the time. I'm gonna be throwing that robo worm. Um, it's an awesome largemouth bait, and you can catch them, you know, with that morning dawn or the margarita mutilator in that dirtier water, and then the green pumpkin for cleaner water. Um, but yeah, those are the two main ones, and then the flat worm as far as colors. Uh, just match the hatch with what kind of stuff you're around. I was around a lot of gobies, and this color is called goby. So just keep it very simple. That's what I do, and, you know, that's what works for me. Some guys like to throw a ton of different colors and baits, but, um, you know, that's just how I like to do it. And then another great one is Kitech Easy Shiner, 3-inch size. So you can throw this on a really small hook. And it's a great way to imitate a small minnow. You know, a lot of times those fish are feeding on glass minnows or very small threadfin shad. And drop shotting a small minnow style bait when they're uh, getting a little bit tough to catch is a great way to catch them. Uh, I remember a table rock last year, actually, the one keeper that I weighed in, uh, you know, they were feeding on very small bait that time of year that we were there. And I was throwing, I was throwing a two inch Kitek Easy Shiner on a eight number or a number six uh mosquito light wire hook so and then i was throwing four pound leader line so if you guys think that's small uh yeah there's there's it, it can get worse for sure but the the last one that i like to throw don't throw much but uh drop shotting a trd it's a really great way to just get bites uh you know when when you need you need bites, you need keepers. Uh, TRD in cleaner water uh, is a great way to catch them. Not necessarily this color, I'll go with like a bait fish imitation. Uh, Champlain, I threw perch imitation and that, I caught a lot of fish on that. Um, but you know, that's pretty much all I got for everything gear wise that you need for a drop shot. Oh, and weights, weights. I, I make my own weights. I got a 3,700 size box right here. It's got pretty much any size of weight. I would highly recommend doing that because the people, you know, drop shot weights are way overpriced for how much they cost to make if you just go out and buy a lead melter and like a couple molds um, and some clips. It's very easy to make them. Doesn't take long and uh, this box was actually full before I went to the St. Lawrence. Uh, you burn a lot of drop shot weights there, but, you know, just keep, you know, lead weights, awesome, awesome option, and making your own, I would definitely recommend that. But, as you guys can tell, keep it very simple, that's how you catch them. Um, keep the gear simple, and so stuff that you have confidence in, for sure, but, Thanks again, guys, for watching another episode of Tackle Rat, and we'll see you guys.